This is a method of proof that we uh, teach our undergraduates because it's very powerful for proving the truth of uh, certain formulas uh, that might be expressing uh, properly about numbers. Um, and I often compare this style of proof to um, how I climb a ladder because I'm scared of heights um, and so I need something to help me climb um, up a high ladder. So uh, the idea of climbing a ladder for me to counter my fear of heights is I find it very easy to get onto the first step of the ladder. Um, if I'm halfway up, then getting from the, the step I'm on to the next step, that also is not so difficult. Um, but if I combine the fact that I can get on the ladder, and once I'm on a ladder, I can get from one step to the next, those combined actually are very powerful because it means I can go as far up the ladder as I want, potentially infinitely far. And so we actually apply the same uh, trick in mathematics. If we're trying to prove a formula is true um, for all numbers, say a formula which uh, expresses adding up the numbers from one to um, some large number n. So you might have a candidate formula for that. To prove that that formula is true for all numbers, you do the thing, same thing as climbing the staircase. You say, okay, let's check it for the first number, um, n equals one. Yeah, the formula works there. Then you suppose the formula is true for n, and then you show why the formula can be extended to, to also be true for n plus one. That's like climbing the next step of the ladder. And with these two bits of proof, it then it therefore implies that the formula is true for all numbers because you can just start at the beginning and climb through to whatever number you're interested in. So this proof by induction is a way actually of using our finite mind and our finite tools of logical deduction to navigate the infinite. Yeah, and I suppose, um, so when I was thinking about proof, proof by induction, I had at the back of my mind that I had already discussed with the Piatti String Quartet, who I was working with, um, this Beethoven Opus 130 Presto. So it's a string quartet, and it's, um, it's a wonderful piece. They love playing it, and it has this rising figure in the first violin all the way through lots and lots. And I was thinking, wow, that would actually be an amazing um, place to sort of um, test out this, this, this musical proof by induction. So following on from what Marcus said, um, I thought, okay, so I need to have a first step of this. Um, what should I do? And I, and I just had um, this, this cell you, you hear of, um, of the Beethoven, just one little cell, about six notes, and it's, it's a sort of, it, the, the, the sort of very crux of this rising figure. Um, and there's a bass step. This is, this is for n equals 1. And what I wanted to do was then think, OK, fine, actually put that as low as possible registry down in the cello. And that's what we do. So you have this, you hear it very low in this base step test. Now, the crux question, suppose it is true for n, and then the induction step, we prove it is true for n plus 1. OK, so I'm going to assume that it's true, this, this thing. Of, of course, it is true in some sense, but it, this first thing. And then I'm going to see what happens if you um, make it a little bit, um, if, you, if you do it for n plus 1. And so to do that, um, I actually step out of Beethoven's language in a sense. Like molto sulpont, very wide vib and sort of mushy material. And then I step back into it um, in this induction step. And it's, I suppose, I'm thinking about the fact that often in mathematics you need to come out of where you are and go around. Well, actually, yeah. I think when you're proving that induction step, uh, very often you won't quite realise um, the manipulation that you need to do in order to suddenly see um, the next rung on the ladder uh, appearing. So, uh, yeah. so I think that was very consistent with quite often the manipulation that needs to be done to get from step n to step n plus one. Yeah. And then, um, and therefore, I then applied that on several occasions. And so for the rest of the piece, I mean, when you, when you hear this, you'll hear these little tests at the beginning. You'll hear the bass step, and then you'll hear this sort of induction step, and then you'll hear more induction steps. But actually, as we go through, I then assume that we know perhaps what we're doing, and off it goes. And in fact, you end up with this, um, the, the first violin, Kind of, again, this is another exploration of infinity because you've got the first violin exploring, going as higher and higher and higher, as high as they possibly can in this induction step off to infinity. And actually, of course, 
It's kind of impossible in reality. Yeah, but I guess because it goes out of the um, kind of spectrum that we can hear with our ears, we, we, we can assume that actually it is carrying on. It's just the, the dogs outside that are yeah. listening to it from that point. But, yeah. but what I love about your choice uh, of the Beethoven here is it absolutely, you know, the Beethoven has this little motif which climbs higher and higher in, in pitch. And so it's lovely to sort of use this idea of proof to show, well, yeah, uh, this is why you can climb as high as you want. 